All right, everybody, good evening. Got my tea all set up, so I'm ready to go. Get back into the dungeon with our good buddy, Bofine, the level 22 Minotaur fighter of Okawaro. So let's jump in. So where did we leave off? All right, so let's kind of just recap. One thing I always try to do um, is look at my situation when I boot back up and just remind myself of who the hell I am, where the hell I am, what my priorities are, what my strengths are, what my weaknesses are. So, um, the first thing that we need to do is just kind of bring up our character screen. Um, so we're 22nd level. We have massive armor class, good evasion, very good shields, humongous strength reasonable in index we have very very high resist negative energy at the moment um, all of our other resistances except are, are uh, turned on our MR is pretty low can't see invisible at the moment our strengths are our war axe our large shield and our crystal plate mail uh, we also have very very good rings we need a better cape or scarf perhaps at this point but other than that i feel really strong um we have two runes at the moment and we are on depth one and i think the priority for us at the moment here um was to simply explore a bit more of the depths okay so remember that if i push shift g and show you the available branches of the dungeon that I've discovered um, I have cleared out the shoals and obtained the rune I've cleared out the first four floors of the vaults and don't really want to go back just yet um, to vaults five because I almost got aced by a tentacled monstrosity um, constricting me on the staircase and then I've cleared the Orcish Mines and the Lair. Places I could go. And I've also cleared the Snake Pit. Um, oh, wait a minute. Yes, yes, that's right, I have. Places I could go. Slime Pits. Not going there right now. Still too difficult. Um, I could also venture into um, Hell. But I don't want to. I've done the first floor of the Elven Halls. But the second floor is pretty difficult. And I don't see any reason in risking it all there for the moment. Um, hell is a complete no-go. And the depths are where I'm at. So I'm going to keep doing the depths. But we might just be getting to a point where... Um, I actually need to uh, bite the bullet here and switch gods uh, so that I can do the crypt and build up piety. But for now, let's just go down and check out Depths 2, see what we're getting into. So... My situation is good. My hit points are good. I'm a little bit hungry, but that's that's about it. And that's not a problem. Um, I see this ogre mage here. I pushed O to kind of auto-explore around. My mini-map is displaying the places I have been. Let me zoom in on my character a bit for you so you can see better. Now, remember, ogre mage can be a bummer just like any mage. So I'm just going to step back one square, one tile, so that my line of sight is limited to just what's directly in front of me here and here. And so what that means is this ogre mage is going to have to step here to get in line of sight. And by that point, um, we'll mitigate his ability to um, use spells at range and just chop him up. Because at melee, he is going to be annihilated by me. Now, what I've done is I've closed the distance here because all of the enemies that you see, while tough, 
in terms of just brute physical strength, um, the two-headed ogres, the captain, uh, the Yaktar captain, and the other ogre don't pose any real threat to me because my armor and my shield skill are too high. This guy, yes, he can shoot, but he's being blocked by these guys. I'm in an excellent uh, position to take them all out because I'm only fighting one-on-one. -on -one. It is very true that I could be getting flanked from over here, but I haven't seen an enemy yet, and the these guys have been making noise, so they would be already here, um, theoretically. And I'm just going to start swinging, and I'm going to step up one to even further insulate myself from getting hit in uh, behind me. The Yaktar got a shot off when the guy dropped, and the shot bounced off, and I'm very hungry, but luckily, um, ogres drop a big pile of food, and I can eat it. And now I'm going to just start exploring. So let's see what's around. Okay. Cool. Potion of uh, curing. Always good to see. Nice little uh, stack of cash. Actually, Fading, I had a question for you. Uh, anybody else out there can chime in as well. Um, I posed this on the DCSS subreddit. And I was curious like, what you think... Would you like it if in the text log they displayed a little bit more uh, of the numbers behind what's going on? And what I mean by that is, like, I would like to see as an optional toggle on or off um, some more transparency as it pertains to, like, two hit rolls, to dodge rolls. Um, and so I can understand, like, what it is I'm rolling to hit, what and what my skills and stats are modifying that amount by so that I can make better decisions on what skills and stats that I want to raise because it's not entirely clear how certain skills and stats impact choices that you make and you can look at the, the wiki for some clarification on that but um, it's not... I just like a little bit more so I know oh, you know what? At this point, Evade is getting me much more bang for my buck than Shield Skill. Like, Shields are, you know, not... I don't really need to raise that anymore. I don't know. That's just something to think about. Okay, so... The ugly Thing... And all of their buddies. You can see how many of these green ugly things there are. These guys, I feel like they used to be harder. They used to have some more annoying abilities. And now, I don't want to... Ooh... Okay, so he's basking in mutagenic energy. Yeah, when I see something like that, I just never want to get changed um, by being mutated. Pretty much the only stuff that's going to pose a significant threat to my um, prospects right now would be further um, mutations or other bodily effects like deterioration or something like that and then uh, the other obvious things hellfire smiting torment um you know stat draining falling down the shaft uh, a situation like this where there's a bajillion guys but this isn't really that bad well for example, I'll tell you that like when you go to block or do anything, even on the equations that they show on the wiki, it says like um, you roll three dice and then that gets modified by some equation that they have. I kind of would just like to see like how much I missed by or how much um, you know, my armor mitigated of the incoming damage just to get a real feel for, like, he hit me for 70, but my armor subtracted 40 from that, you know, so I would get a better sense of what the things that I had were doing. It's not a game breaker. It's just I, like, would just prefer some more, like, raw data. Um, oh man, look at this. You see this? I got Ice Dragon scales. Not that that's bad, um, but I'm looking for fire dragon scales from a treasure trove. Anyway, I'm being very greedy um, at that point. Okay, so there's a bunch of enemies here, but they're not 
super challenging. Zombie Dragon is not hard for me. If you want to come and try to do melee damage to me, please, please, I welcome that. Come, you know, for me all day long. Um, because... I'll crush that. Uh-oh, he confused me. Okay, no, he's dead. All right, so... Oh, there is his Ot Trap, so it's getting spicier by the second. Oh, gosh, okay. So there's two liches here, so I need to go finesse immediately and just destroy these guys before they start uh, doing anything real funky to me. Um, let me just check myself. I, I didn't get drained or anything. I didn't even get hit necessarily, so that's a relief. Okay. Um, I learned... Hey, I learned Mephitic Cloud and Control Blink. I'm sure I can cast those easily in my Crystal Plate armor with no spell casting ability. All right. Um, I'm exploring, exploring. I'm feeling pretty good here. Okay. Now, again... This is one of those times in the game where this is the first time this run that we have encountered sun demons, okay? Sun demons are nasty enemies. And you might say, well, how nasty? And this is where I tell you how nasty. You right-click on them, all right? And it says, it looks easy. So to me, it's easy, okay? And it has 55 hit points. Um, and really, it doesn't have any special abilities, but um, it can deal extra fire damage, okay? So, these guys aren't that bad. So, what I'm going to do is just step back around the corner here, right? And then push S until this guy gets into range. Oh, boy. Okay, now it's getting, it's getting real toasty here because this... Um, ball rug has appeared all right so let's look at this guy while we have a moment um a ball rug uh is you know like the demon from lord of the rings that pulls gandalf down temporarily uh and so it's something to be worried about right the game's telling me it's dangerous but really none of this is that scary to me what I want to do is immediately look at... I know, those are pretty severe spoilers. <laughs> if you haven't seen or read, um, I've ruined your day. Anyway, um, look at... He's doing a bunch of, like, fire damage at range, okay? And remember, if you want to know, like, what Sticky Flame does, um, it blasts you, and then you get hit with this, like, dot of fire damage it's annoying these are all annoying but the number one thing that sucks is he's got smiting somehow so that blows so i'm gonna just use my abilities here and chop into this um okay so he hit me with a fireball which exploded now he doesn't have to care about the fact that the fireball explodes and hits him because he's made of fire right um now my fire resistance is reasonable it's one out of three um and i don't believe i don't have any extra stuff to equip that would give me more fire resistance at the moment i would say that that's one thing that actually i could improve upon um with this character that's not immediately visible i'm gonna eat by the way when i look at my character screen which is that i don't have a lot of auxiliary situational gear that i can pop on to change my uh resistances if i would need it all right so yeah here's a branch into hell which was appropriately guarded by a ball rug and some fire type creatures because that's what you're going to face in hell so i mean another reason i'm not going into hell right now is because um my fire resistance isn't quite what i'd like it to be okay 
so partly explored you want to explore other places as well um, sure we can do that we can explore other places but I don't see what the big deal is um, is this an exclusion mark oh if I could like fly over the lava I could see back here who cares about that let's go down no not there oh my god we're not going into hell just yet let's look around let's look around what we're doing at this point uh, um, we're not obviously getting a rune in the depths, um, but what we're doing is getting experience, leveling ourselves up, and looking for key gear pieces that will make um, other parts of the game easier for us. Okay, now, is this a vampire? Okay, um, there's a bunch of guys that are starting to surround me, so I'm gonna go heroic, and I'm gonna go finesse, and this would be scary, like, my positioning tells me that this is not the best place to stand because I'm around a bunch of guys without the protection of walls and things. But remember, I am using an axe, so I can get away with that. I'm also extremely powerful, so I can get away with that. Let me look at these Quicksilver Dragon Scales. Um, so the benefit is that it's... Um, It's basically just good if you need light encumbrance armor. Okay, well, you know, that would be good if I was a, a hybrid type or even a, maybe a caster looking for something heavier to get into. Um, it does appear to have some kind of magic resist built in, but nothing... I mean, my armor class would go down to 20 if I put that on, and I'm looking at a 35 right now. Ooh, oh, this is vomitous, okay? Um, so... What you do when you see a vomitous area like this is you just take a moment to assess what could happen to me. And unfortunately, a lot. Um, these guys, these wizards, you know, because they're wizards, they have all kinds of spells that they can cast. Um, luckily, Banishment is the only one that I'm tremendously upset about. I don't want to go to the abyss. I would do okay. I would survive the abyss, you know, knock on wood, pr with a very, very high probability rate, um, given my current stats and situation. But I just don't like to go there. It's a waste of resources. And there's always the chance I get mutated, and that sucks. So I don't want that to happen. But as far as the crystal spear, I'll block that with my shield or my reflection, most likely. Getting paralyzed with blow... Okay, so, you know, there's that. And what do you got? You've got all kinds of nasty stuff. Um, and then you suck. Okay, so the idea is I could, emphasis on could, exploit this situation here to start firing in some wands. But that's tit for tat. And what I mean is, like, they'll all get to do their thing at me. Um, but I do have my lightning rod. Now, the, the drawback of this is you can see that there is a, um, the range on my lightning rod isn't that great. It's not going to hit them all. I'm just going to shoot this in here, and this has better range. Okay, and then, um, I put a bunch of water under them. And then now I'm going to just, after having done that, step back out of their line of sight. Um, and if I actually did summon any water elementals. Oh. Yeah, I want to become famous. Um, but I don't want to use your horrifying service. Thanks for the offer, though. Um, okay. Yes, I'd love to not be able to leave my home because people recognize me on the street as a dungeon crawl player. I mean, I'm, it's such a popular thing that I would just get mobbed. I wouldn't be able to go anywhere or have a normal life because the dungeon crawl, the dungeon crawl crowd um, would be all over me. All right, now let me look at this. Um, this rust devil has just blasted me 
No, it's this reaper from afar with his scythe. Yeah, I'm going to have to step back and just take a second to go heroic uh, and kill this guy quickly. I don't want this vampiric scythe to do any more damage to me, so I'm going to step up here and just rest. I'll kill this guy, this little hellwing. Um, okay, what do we got here? We got a Gelid Demon Spot. Okay, so this is a cool moment in the game um, because what we're getting access to in the depths are all kinds of new creatures. And so this is a, a chance for us to just get information and learn about them. So this Demon Spawn has a huge armor class, but that's about it. Yeah, I have... I can hit you. Okay, so here's a Red Devil. Are you dangerous? No. Um, I'll throw something at you. Oh, I can't see that place. Interesting. Okay. Um, all right. So let's then go, go back to exploring. Hey, red devil. Okay. Throw it. Throw it. Throw it. Throw it. Um, I was reading some of the patch notes for version 2.4. And remember, that is what we're playing now. That is the latest offline version of the game. Uh, and, ooh, there's somebody who's invisible here. Are they still hitting me? No, they're dead. All right. And one of the things that they mentioned doing was overhauling the um, throwing mechanic. And they really... Oh, God, that guy has, like, some kind of artifact staff. That's sweet that you can see that, by the way. I always love in games when you can see what kind of equipment people have. Like in World of Warcraft or whatever, when you walk around and you're just like, Oh, my God, look at that guy's gear. Versus games that just keep your gear concealed um, or generic. Anyway, um, what they did was they took out, like, there used to be blowguns in the game, and you would have to get darts for it, and then you could shoot them with the blowgun. Um, and so they just kind of streamlined the whole throwing system. And there used to be tomahawks, and they re removed those and replaced them all with boomerangs. And boomerangs are sweet because they, you like, throw them and, you know, they return, like in real life. Um, and by the way, Leveling my throwing isn't completely absurd, given the fact that Okawaru probably gave me a stack of these to add on to my 59 silver javelins. But javelins now have been upgraded, so they always penetrate, okay? So they always penetrate. And um, silver is an insane modifier, where it gives them the highest Vorpal damage possible and adds all the old silver brand stuff, which is like, you know, gives them a benefit to... Uh, dealing with werewolves or undead things, I believe. Um, so, you know, just as something to consider, throwing at least has been made easier. Um, ooh, this Spriggan is berserk, so he's getting a bunch of attacks in. Unfortunately for him, he's terrible uh, against me. Like, this is the point of the game where um, my stats are so tremendous against people who are just doing melee with nothing else that I welcome it. It's like free experience. Uh, so, now I say that, there's still guys that can hit me harder than hell that, that, you know, are difficult, but not right here, unless it's like a name person. Anyway, let's look at our skills, actually, while we're thinking about that. So I'm currently leveling fighting to get myself more hit points, because that's what that, what that, that is what that does. I will always be leveling axes with this character because that is the weapon I've chosen and I need to get this to the max level, which is 27, before I even turn it off because every single level it affects your ability to hit with an axe and your damage that you do with it, which is the number one thing I need to care about, okay? And I'm leveling up armor. I also want to maximize this and shields. I also want to max this. I stopped leveling evocations because... My 10 skill was good enough, and I stopped leveling dodging at 12. I will turn those back online soon enough. But right now, I'm happy with this arrangement. So let's keep exploring the depths. We're on depths 3, by the way. Um, oh, crap. Ancient Lich. Even worse. I'm going to step over here. He still somehow doesn't see me. Like, what kind of a... Um, this guy has his skeletal head so far up his ass. If he's not aware of me, I'm walking around about as stealthy as you, as unstealthy as you can possibly be. 
Um, anyway, I love the fact that he can't see me. I'm going to go heroic just to kill this guy as fast as I can before anybody piles on and before he drains me uh, of my stats. Well, I do have a ring of fire. Um, and so this could be something that I wear if I really, really want to go into hell or some flaming creature comes at me. However, you have to be wary of when you wear something like a ring of fire or a ring of coal, it does make you susceptible to the opposing element. But generally, that's not a big deal, especially considering the fact that my resist cold is already plus two. So, you know, getting a little hit there to get more fire resistance wouldn't be bad. Now, here's this wizard, and he has this, um, a staff of power, which is annoying, uh, and he needs to die immediately. Okay, so he did. He, he obliged. He accommodated. Um, we've got some big boy creatures here. I'll just go heroic for the heck of it and chop all these guys up with a little tab action. Okay, here comes a Hell Knight. All right. Now, remind me, Hell Knight, what are you all about? What can you do to me again? Um, you, you're you easy. Oh, yeah, and you can just cast some rather low-level necromantic things at me, but my resist negative energy is insane. Um, now, however, I almost made what can only be called a classic dungeon crawl mistake. He looked easy. And I just started pushing Tab to walk towards him and obliterate him. But let's just, ref you know, take a break, take a breath. This is unexplored territory. I don't know what the hell's up here. Also, I had to come around the corner and it exposed two necromancers and another Hell Knight. Now, all of those together make for something nasty that I don't want to deal with with this current positioning. Remember, I'm on the Depths 3. I can never forget that. This is hard. There is going to be hard stuff. The tempo of the game is such that you can start feeling really, really confident, and then all of a sudden, it can turn on a dime. So I'm going to step back here, just keep pushing S until I get some people in my view. Yes, one of the Necromancers came into view. I'm actually going to step up here and kill the Necromancer first, um, because, yeah, he's going to start trying to summon stuff against me, um, which is annoying. So I'm going to move back here, kill this simulacrum. Ooh. And this wizard got alerted to the to the dance as well. Um, okay. So I'm actually going to step over here and try to kill this wizard right away so that he can't shoot at me. And I'll kill these hell knights. These guys are not hard. The necromancer is potentially hard because I believe he has banishment, but he's dead. All right. Now, Banishment, as I said earlier, um, isn't something that at this point in the game would be much worse than an inconvenience, but it still could go south. There's still that one in a hundred times where I have trouble finding the way out and I get heavily mutated and my run is ended. So I will go into the Abyss on my terms if possible, not on their terms. Um, okay, so this is a really hilarious random zone where you have some statues that are, you know, going to try to hit me, as well as some frost giants that definitely want to hit me, but they're blocked off by these walls and these translucent doors. However, I can see that these doors are open down here, so these dragons are going to come out and into this area and fight me and use their breath weapon on me. Now, if I go in here, I'll get blasted by these, but that's not a concern for the moment. I'm going to step back immediately okay um as the game marks the area unsafe for travel around the guys it x's them out and i'm just gonna walk back walk back walk back now this guy has finally come into view but he won't get to take a shot at me because i'm gonna step back and eliminate his line of fire and i'm gonna keep stepping back until i get into this area here oh he's not gonna come in because he wants to look through the window at me and not really hit me um i'm gonna have to probably lure him out a little better then all right i will fine He's not super dangerous, but again, I'm just not going to give them the advantage of like standing on water and trying to fight people who can hit me at range. Cool. They have come into my range, and so now I can just fight them 
Uh, let's see what we've got here. So basically what they're saying is if I walk through here and deal with this statue, I will gain access to this little alcove of treasure. I can't quite see much back here. Um, there's some unbranded items. There is a spell book. There might be some good stuff. I think the best thing to do is um, I'm going to fly. So I have plenty of potions of flight. I'm going to use one. And I'm going to fly um, over here and over here. And then here. Oh. Okay. Um, I was going to try to look through this window. But this is a good flying lesson for everybody. Everybody wants some flying lessons um you'll see how the word fly that's the buff saying i can fly has turned a different color it's less intense it's less vibrant in blue it's a lighter blue now let's look at the text box and it says you feel very buoyant which means um i have oh i can dig through this wall with my wand um okay Oh, no, it, it won't. I can't dig through this stone wall. Um, wow. It actually... Um, if you look in the... Um, oh, the window? No, it won't let me get through that either. Um, you know what's cool is it didn't used to do this, but it's telling me that it's like I'll waste my charge. It's being, being very nice to me. The game has become very nice. They must have changed it in some version so the digging wand doesn't work on some of the stuff that it used to work on. But anyway... Um, I'm, this is ticking down, telling me like, hey, um, you're not flying as awesome as you used to, and so I need to get off the deep water, where there's a chance I just fall in and drown. Now, I'm gonna, my resist cold is pretty reasonable, so I'm gonna take a step into this area, and he's gonna try to blast me. Actually, I'm, let me switch to my cloud immunity. Um, okay. Here. All right, and then, no, okay. Did I put the, I didn't put it on. Yeah, please, can I put this thing on? Are you gonna let me do that? Okay, there we go. Yeah, okay. So I think that these clouds will help me not take damage so that I can at least walk in here and see. Unfortunately, everything in here sucks. Um, there's a lightning rod, which I already have, and if you remember, um, you can't get more like having a second evocable item of the same type doesn't do anything for you so if i didn't have that that would be cool the jeweled staff might be cool if i cast spells the spell books are always nice but that was more of something that a caster would want now anyway luckily i had this nice scarf of you know clouds and i have good cold resist so that really wasn't that challenging for me but I'm going to put my uh, spirit shield back on so I get my little hit point buffer. I'm going to rest until that restores. Um, and I'm not even going to go over here. No thanks, other explorer. We don't need to bother with that. Okay, so let's go down again. We're set. Um, scroll of magic mapping. Good. Look at this treat. Okay, this is one, two, three, four boggarts. This boggarts already summoned an ice dragon. Boggarts are hard. Why? Because they summon. That's primarily what makes them hard. Um, they, The thing about people who summon, if you recall, is that when you kill them, all of their summons go away. However, they have all of this survivability stuff. They can go invisible and they can blink. Um, additionally, they summon shadow creatures, um, which they can summon guys from the abyss. And I believe this is the run where a boggart summoned a dude from the abyss that can mutate you from afar. Like, like uh, maybe this thing. Um, double yuck. Nah, it doesn't do anything. Um, but what you have to be wary of is they can summon things that could potentially mutate you. And even though the summoned guy is temporary... Um, the mutation is not. Now wait, I'm going to just show you that they can't come up the steps. So this guy's been summoned, so he's next to me. I'm going to go up the steps, and he can't come up here. So I'm just going to wait a little bit. Actually, I'll find a different staircase to go down. Oh, what is this a staircase to? Um, pandemonium? 
No, it's uh, must be what? Oh no, it is pandemonium. It's just not showing it. One way gate leading to the halls of pandemonium. So the pandemonium halls of pandemonium. If you're new to the game, stay the hell out of the halls of pandemonium. Much like you should stay out of the abyss and stay out of hell. Um, they are end game extended branches that are very very challenging and as you can see for example on that sign it said one way you go in there you can't stair dance unless you find a way out and it's not guaranteed that you will find it easily so pandemonium is something that you want to avoid until you're ultimately ready and also the thing about pandemonium unless they've changed this there are four runes i believe in pandemonium that are guarded by these like incredibly big guys take up multiple tiles and if you leave a floor of pandemonium you can never go back um and so what that means is you only have one shot at those runes if you want to go for them so don't go in there until you're extremely ready to get them otherwise you'll waste your opportunity i plan on doing that later but this is not the time so let's try this other staircase down into number four and here are these white very ugly things and let's just remind ourselves of what these guys can do um they hit us and they do a bunch of cold damage okay so that's not terribly frightening to me at the moment um i'm just gonna blast them with tab yeah and they all died okay so here's a ball rug again or i'm sorry a fire giant he's not too bad he will do damage with his fire. And he has a great sword, which is annoying. Ooh, gold dragon. Cool. Let's step out of those uh, acid clouds and just wait for this guy to come up to us and destroy him. Cool. Axe skill up. Oop. Chop up that uh, wizard there. Or, I'm sorry, necromancer. Uh, okay, we got a skeleton. Let's just go back here and rest. Well, that skeleton interrupted our nap. Um, okay, so there's some undead that keeps coming in. That's fine. Undead is generally pretty easy. Ooh, okay. So, Spriggans can be tricky, all right? Especially when they're mages. Um, so I'm going to step out and just wait and give myself the, the best chance to fight them without them having range on me. Yeah, look at that. He had a... Uh, large tang of speed. No, thank you. Um, okay, so here's an Abyssal n Knight, or a Hell Knight, rather. Um, let's just chop him up. Okay, so we're doing okay here. Oh, Jesus, that guy. These guys move really fast. Good Lord. All right, um, let's go Heroic, and let's go Finesse. This is a kind of a tricky spot. All right, good. Now, fingers crossed, because what do we want right here? We want these Fire Dragon Scales. God, again, no Fire Dragon Scales. I, I mean, I've gotten how many cold dragon scales um, and quick dragon scales, but as of not yet, no fire dragon scales. Um, I mean, no gold dragon scales either, but that's to be expected. All right, we'll get it. We'll get it. No complaining. Oh, okay. Uh, we need to take this guy out. Yeah, he's corroding me. Okay. Here's a tentacled monstrosity. Has it been summoned or is this just here? All right, that's a problem. I'm going to go finesse. I'm going to go heroic. And I'm going to chop. Okay, so now we're dealing with summon guys, which, no thanks, I don't want to even bother. Um, I don't typically... Does anybody know offhand? Will cancellation cure corrosion? Are there... Or curing? Is there a potion that will take out corrosion? Alright, so he's gripped me, but I've got him. No problem. This is a good time to just remind everyone um, that if you don't know um, what something is, Okay, you got to wiki it. Go to the Dungeon Crawl wiki, and it does say here nicely, um, corrosion just wears off after time, but you can use a potion of cancellation to get rid of it. Um, or purple draconian fun stuff. Um, now, 
I'm hypersensitive to corrosion because my last run was ruined by getting too corroded. Um, I do believe, though, if I drank that potion of cancellation, it would have gotten rid of my finesse. Look at this, gold dra- oh no, there's no scales, just a corpse. And my um, heroic, but if the corrosion was significant enough, that would have been worthwhile. It was only minus four, so not the end of the world there. All right, did that Bogart see me? Well, he sees me now. Let's get rid of him. Let's get rid of him. Okay. Before I start having a lot of fun, here's a juggernaut. All right, let me right-click on this for you. Extremely dangerous, all right? Why? Because he's very fast, and he hits hard as heck for up to 40, and he can hit for 80, okay? So that's terrifying, but it's also in conjunction with um, the... Zatua or Ixtahua. Um, and this person is annoying because it's a big old dragon that um, can paralyze and searing breath. And so I need to move away. I need to go heroic and I need to, um, oops, sorry, go finesse and just kill this juggernaut as fast as possible. And I'm going to step in here and see if we can take out this dragon. We got it. No problem. All right. Okay, so we took out a bunch of really tough guys there, and that just kind of further solidifies that given a hard situation, Okawaru is still helping us out. You, you could make an argument that Oka is kind of like tapering off in effectiveness because we already have a lot of gear, and you get a supreme amount of Okawaru's value from just getting the gear gifts and helping to complete your kit so that you don't have any gaping holes in your inventory but right there i think that was a very good demonstration of how effective um heroism and uh finesse are so he gave me an artifact set of plate armor which is quite generous uh i can't identify this so i'll do it just for the fun but my inventory is getting a little bit rattled let me just use this and see how good this is um it does it's it's pretty good artifact in the sense that it has only three brands and they're all helpful so it's got resist cold resist negative energy and see invisible those are all cool things to have i actually am maxed on resist negative energy my resist cold is fine i can't see invisible but it's only plus three and i have my crystal plate so it's not going to happen but that's a nice gift. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you can see the the gifts aren't necessarily as good. Although it's not to say I couldn't spike something insane and, you know, crap my pants about it. But for now, um, th that particular benefit of Okawaru is losing some of its potency. I'm going to drop this Amnesia. I'm going to drop this Intelligence Ring. I will drop this Ring of Fire. I will drop this Plus Two Ring of Protection. Rings of Protection are fine early game, but at this point, I can't afford to use a Ring Slot on anything that only gives one thing. Accessory Slots are really the place where you need to stack and try to get as versatile a piece of equipment in that slot so that you can cover all of the bases of your resistances and any weaknesses that you have um i don't really need this wand of paralysis or eh, i'll keep the wand of polymorph that, that can be useful um okay everything else is fine for the time being now um one thing I want to kind of illustrate is I just noticed something with respect to Okawaru's abilities. And considering that this whole run is about me explaining Okawaru to newer players, I want to talk about heroism. Um, okay. And I thought that this was the case, but I wasn't sure. So, um... Heroism gives all your non-magic skills a boost by five, but you can't go past um, the skill cap of 27. 
So heroism is definitely something that loses its effectiveness once you have start maxing out skills. Uh, so that was kind of dumb to step into that dragon and expose new areas uh, that I haven't yet mapped. Um, so I'm going to go heroic and just wait for this dragon to come out. What, you're not going to come out? Come on, man. Okay, oh, crap, that boggart's back there. I got to get him before he summons too many things. All right, chop these guys up. Um, okay, so here is a deep troll earth mage. And you can dig and lease rapid deconstruction, which is like it blows up rocks around you. Um, okay, so annoying things that it can do, but uh, it can't send me into the abyss, which is what I was like kind of concerned about. But okay, so here comes a tentacle monstrosity. These guys can always be hard because they can limit your movement and then they can, if they get their hooks into you, um, they can start crushing you. Although, did they take away the damage that Constriction does? I'm gonna look at that um, because it used to be that Constriction um, would just do this. Oh, okay, it can, it can crush you to death over several turns, okay. Um, and then it starts to do more and more damage as it goes. Okay, okay, so fair enough. So it still does hurt you. I just wanted to verify that, like, to see if they nerfed being constricted. I've had characters that are so unbelievably powerful get killed by these guys deep in the game, not because they were blocking the steps, although that's a thing that could happen that's quite annoying, but because I just got crushed. I couldn't kill it fast enough. Um, now, I am going to push M and show you that I've used my heroism and so like my axis skill is maxed my dodging is maxed um, and if I go to they've been enhanced and so if I use just push uh, underscore you can see that my skills are still getting a benefit that's reasonable from heroism but it's starting to you know go down in I'm not using all five I should say so he has now constricted me and you can see that you've been constricted by this debuff here in yellow that says constriction, okay? Um, but I'm able to kill him before it starts hurting me. He's just kind of like, first he wraps you up to limit your mobility, and then he starts trying to squeeze you to death. All right, so here we go. We got a bunch of um, Yaktars. I'm just gonna do have some fun here and hold down tab and just obliterate them. Obliterate you. Hello. Okay. Um, another lightning rod. That is a shame. That's the third one that we've seen. Um, okay. So here is a very, very hard enemy. Good time. I'm, I'm really hoping we get the opportunity to at least introduce you guys or reintroduce you because most of you guys are um, longtime players to these name monsters. And I'm reintroducing myself to them because I just need to see if any changes have been made to them since this version. Alright, so Mara is the Lord of Illusions. Alright, what makes this person hard? Um, he creates intricately detailed illusions so real that they are almost as deadly as the creatures that they impersonate. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, that he makes an illusion of you. Um, and that's a nightmare because... Like, I'm very strong. I wouldn't want to fight me if I saw me in this game. Um, I would, you know, be worried of that. Um, so, Mara can summon, and Mara can summon Illusion. I'm going to just get some more information. So, a mirror image of an enemy, which is me. Right, yeah, so that's what the, Mara does. I've been killed by Mara, okay? So, I know enemies, and I stopped the game when I see enemies that have killed me, and pretty much I've played this game so many times that most difficult enemies have killed me. Um, so, Mara's gonna do that. So, what we wanna do is um, get ourselves as jacked as possible so that Mara has the least amount of time possible to make illusions or more Mara's okay so Mara is dead and that was pretty easy Mara stayed close Mara didn't use tough abilities and I was swinging so fast that Mara got rocked I'm gonna raise my strength okay with my 
a bonus stat at level 24, and that was one of those double stat levels, one random stat, one bo um, stat that I get to pick, and I got strong and agile, and that's amazing. Um, Mara had a big old demon blade of pain. Demon blades are pretty cool items because um, they are one-handed weapons with nice base damage. And, you know, I always just favor base damage on one-handed weapons because I shield whenever I can. All right, I'm just chopping these guys away as much as I can, and it won't let me walk through that cloud. That's fine. Kill these guys. All right, there's a cloud there. Let's kill this necromancer. Okay, chop this up. We got plenty of food, and what's this? This is the treasure room. Um, so what kind of boots are these? These are glowing boots. Um... Our boots are really, really good. Um, they're slaying plus five. I would have to find insane boots and these glowing boots. When you see something like this where it's just like has one magical word that's like glowing or whatever, um, that's an indication to you that this is just a blue item. So I need to replace the boots that I have. It would have to be with an artifact at this point. Here comes a juggernaut. Um, so I'm going to go heroic because they are hard. They can hit you. Um, yeah, you see, he bapped me and he hit me um for one so no he got me really hard there um he hit me quite hard he hit me for what 40 right there so juggernauts are a melee guy that's actually uh stout enough to contend with me that i have to pay attention to now oh, i got a shape-shifting turkey all right, gold dragon in a poisonous space. Ooh, and I'm also getting wailed on by another dragon. Ooh, we got some gold dragon scales. Look at that. Gold dragon scales, if you aren't familiar, are insanely good armor. Insanely good. They are the second best heavy armor in the game, and um, you could make a case, given your circumstance and the gear that you have, that they're actually better than crystal plate simply because they give you resistance. So gold dragon scales um, give you resist fire, resist cold, and resist poison. So it's this nice little um, spread of resistances that can make them preferable to many characters. They require less encumbrance rating, but for me... Um, I'm going to stick with my armor, and I'll show you why. First of all, I already have resist fire, cold, and poison. I, I could, of course, use more, but my armor itself is giving me uh, magic resistance, which I desperately need, and it's giving me better base armor. And then this plus seven dexterity, believe it or not, is coming in handy uh, because it's helping me with my evade and my shield skill as well as my accuracy. So, um, I could consider that those dragon scales, and I'm going to leave them there, but if I feel like I have to go into hell and I don't have enough resist fire, then there is a very good chance I'll put those on when I go into hell just to give me some more fire resistance. Nice thing is, I could pick this up and go to my stash and all that, but... I'm just going to leave it here and recall that it's here because I can always just control F um, and type in, you know, fire resistance, for example, and if that's what I needed, and these would show up immediately as stuff that I found with fire resistance, all right, or I could just control F and type in, you know, gold scales or whatever, um, oops, um, you have to be really specific, it's not like a Google algorithm, um, gold dragon okay um and then it'd be like oh here's your gold dragon scales right here so i could just get to them easily without putting it in my stash these guys were all sleeping on the job that's embarrassing um okay i head butted them oh okay marjorie all right so i'm gonna step back around the corner i'm gonna go heroic and i'm gonna finesse and i'm gonna right click and look on marjorie what are you about marjorie so, what does she do that's dangerous? Okay, Marjorie says, it says she looks extremely dangerous. She has 165 hit points. 
Um, she's a lithe spellcaster in service to the powers of hell. So there, are, you know, she's around these hell knights. It's her du duty to ensure that inhabitants of the dungeon never forget their place. Oh, okay. Well, the dungeon itself kind of does that for me. She personally slew the ancient dragon from whose hide her strange armor is crafted. Ooh, that's cool. So maybe she has some, like, specific armor that I can check out. Anyway, um, she can hit me for 30, and she has a war axe of draining. So that's quite annoying. Her spells don't scare me at all. It's just getting drained and getting hit. So I'm going to... Um, target her. That will hit also this Hell Knight, but I want to make sure all the damage goes to Marjorie. Um, I'm just going to continue to click on Marjorie until she's dead. And she is. And, you know, Okawaru is so happy because Marjorie is really evil. Um, and here's her armor. Are these, like, fire dragon scales? Or are these special Marjorie scales? No, okay, she just had fire dragon. Great, look at that. So, I'm going to pick up her fire dragon scales and just remember that i have a treasure portal um that needs plus four unfortunately these are plus zero and there's no enchant armor scrolls that i have found and haven't used yet i used them all on my shield if you recall um because i want the benefit of being able to block better now as opposed to you know down the road um i might get into a treasure vault um, or a treasure trove with plus four dragon scales. So we'll save these um, and just, you know, hope that um, this amulet of magic regeneration is going to be dropped. I don't give a shit about my magic points um, at this point with this character. Okay. Um, just kind of looking through my inventory before I progress any further. I'm going to drop this ring of dexterity. I don't need that. My... Dexterity is already quite strong, and remember, it's going to be have to be an artifact ring to replace my two artifact rings. Um, okay, cool, cool, let's keep going. Alright, so we're making very, very good progress here. Um, I'm just going to tab through these Yaktars. Tab is auto battle. If... Um, if you're new to the game, auto battle is an amazing quality of life thing that you can do, but it's dangerous. And I've um, tweaked the danger of it by going into the... I'm playing offline here. Um, just my preferred method of play. Although I'm going to try, I think, next run to play online because I've never really done it. And there's a tournament coming up, and that might be fun. And also, I just want to see what it's like. I see people playing online and they have like these footprints that follow behind them and I'm like what the hell are these footprints it shows obviously where they've been that, that might be nice and there might be some other resources with the online client that I like I know you can play trunk which is a more updated version of the game I believe with some experimental upgrades that they haven't quite solidified for the next version um, which is kind of cool but anyway my point to that is altering your auto battle stop or your auto fight stop is different in offline and online. In online, I believe you can just do it in the game by typing like RC or something like that. I'll have to look at that more because I've never done it. But offline, you have to edit the uh, one of the files that comes with the game uh, in like Notepad or something and just change the percentage that they start the auto fight stop at as default, which is 50, which is fine, but not safe enough for me. And so I always change the auto fight stop to be like 70 75 or 80 depending on what you feel like and i've done 80 this time to be just super safe so what that means is i can hold tab with a little bit less worry because if i get below 80 percent health i will not be able to auto fight anymore and i can't kill myself just by holding down that button theoretically okay um depth four clear let's step down to five see what we got all right teleport scroll flight potion some lava. I'm just kind of stepping carefully. Um, and I'm going to go back to auto-exploring. Here's a dragon. I'm going to step up here to limit his line of sight until he gets near me. And then just obliterate him. Here comes a white ugly thing. And then a bunch of guys. Everybody's here. Everybody's here for the party. I'm going to stand on the staircase. I'm just waiting, pushing S on the staircase until I get surrounded by enough guys. This is actually a really cool staircase to use for stair dancing. Um, because one two three four of the adjacent tiles are blocked by a wall 
Um, and then one is actually blocked by lava, which this flying guy doesn't give a shit about. But any other enemy that doesn't fly would, you know, have a problem with that. And so it really helps me limit how many guys get around me. And then I can just stair dance up and fight these guys uh, knowing that there's not as many. I'm going to go heroic because I know I'm going to be stepping down into a shitstorm. And um, I'm going to wait until I get a few more guys on me. Two is fine. I will go back up, stair dancing, killing these guys. I'm still heroic. I'm at full health. I'm going to step back down. We got two purple ugly things. Um, I'm sorry, very ugly things because these are the harder versions. Uh, and no more guys are going to be able to get adjacent because there's no flyers that I see. So I'm just going to go up. This Yaktar is going to have a fun time just shooting at me until I clear this out. Um, remember... Stair dancing, which is what I'm doing here, is one of the most powerful tactics you can use in this game uh, to clear things out on your terms, but it doesn't come without a drawback, which is that when, when you go down the stairs, you are vulnerable, and you can see, like, this Yaktar captain is shooting at me. All of these guys are getting attacks on me, and then even when I go back up the stairs, all of these guys get an extra swing at me. Um, so you have to factor that in, which is why it's often valuable to like either use a potion give yourself a buff of some kind before you go down the stairs to a level you've either never explored and you expect to be dangerous or a level you have been stair dancing on and enemies have been allowed uh, alerted by shouts and screams and uh, the sounds of death and so the stairs are around and uh, are surrounded and there's guys at range who are going to be firing at you and guys close by who are going to hit you so you want to just walk in prepared as possible now okawaru has given me a nice little artifact item here i am going to check out what this twisted hand axe is all about um it's a flaming hand axe with re resist electricity magic resistance and dex minus two i already have um a flaming hand axe that is uh strictly better in terms of the fact that it's flaming and it's plus eight um this does have resist elect and you know magic resistance but i'm not going to i'm just going to drop this right away it there's probably no chance in hell i would use it even if it was insane because it's a hand axe and what i mean by that is a hand axe um if you look at it it has a base damage of seven which means that there's enemies now that i'm going to be encountering whose armor is just going to shrug that off right away because it's just not doing enough base damage whereas my war axe um is 11 base damage i'd like a artifact broad axe which is the best one-handed axe with base damage that you can get um but i'll take this plus 11 war axe i'm not complaining too tremendously about that so um let me take a glance at my inventory. I've got these scrolls of enchant weapon that I can't even use because um, I don't have any weapons right now that aren't artifacts. So I'm just going to drop those here. And if I need them later, I'll just control F to find them and acquire them. Uh, have I picked up any wands that are dumb at this point? No, these are all fine. Remember, I did raise evocations, so all of those wands are impactful. I'm going to go heroic again and step down. I'm going to step back up, kill these uglies step down step up kill the uglies step down step up kill the birdman and um or the tengu warrior and another ugly rest go heroic and step down now this is kind of a bad situation for me because these guys are just going to stand on the other side of the lava and shoot at me however i have a large shield which means i block like a you know motherfucker and i also have a plus four amulet of reflection so i'm just shooting arrows back at these dudes which is why like for example you see this yaktar is hurt um so i'm just going to stand here i'll walk around a little bit see if they want to play um they do kind of i'm just going to hold tab and clear, kill them all um this lava is making smoke which is actually kind of nice for me in that spot because smoke clouds block line of sight um so they can't shoot me if the smoke is in a certain position. Uh, but it also is kind of annoying because it makes it so I can't really get a clear view of what's out there. Um, okay, resting. Got them all dead. Boom. All right, another Hell Knight. Okay, 
lot of hell knights here a lot of hell knights okay now we're seeing a bunch of enemies so it's time to step back and start stair dancing just to get a stronger footing on this level actually i'm just gonna hold tab and kill them all because they're not hard hell knights are not really that hard the necromancer is slightly hard but at this point not that bad remember i do have uh three out of three resist negative energy so not super concerned about that oh here's a fire dragon maybe he'll drop me a fire dragon scales that's plus four so we can go into that trove wouldn't that be something now he did drop fire dragon scales which is quite sexy but they're plus zero so wah wah still got to get the uh enchant armor going all right so fire giant did his usual a little bit of damage he's a heavy hitter with some fire damage it's gonna happen or not that time it won't happen apparently now i do want to just take a uh, yeah I, I i love this i mean i was advocating earlier on the subreddit for better descriptions i still want these flavor descriptions i just like to see the dice and some of the mechanics behind this to know exactly what it means numerically to open the fire giant like a pillowcase i mean i get it idea but come on um all right there's a cursed ring of attention don't care for that right now um okay so here's a bunch of uglies so just lure them back and tab the crap out of them oh trolls okay um let's just tab them not a huge concern Ooh, these fire dragon scales ah they are but they're plus zero all right um oh okay well this guy wants to hit me so let's let him come into view Okay, we have a Draconian, and we have some Draconians. All right, that's fine. I'll just lure them out one by one. Ooh, wow, look at that, a cloak. We might be having some cloak action, people. It's a plus zero cloak. Okay. Now, the question... I'm not going to wear this cloak because my spirit shield is still better because even though this will give me armor and my scarf of spirit shield doesn't the fact that i can draw from these 29 hit points is going to be better than the plus zero armor now when i get an artifact cloak um or a cloak with some you know brands and some pluses then maybe we have a decision to make but right now not really a decision man i was getting hit there it's annoying okay all right let's just rest and heal up auto exploring oh my god the orange crystal statue yikes get the hell away from that thing um, I'm going to go back up the steps. It summoned a bunch of stuff. So remember, summoned guys can't follow you up the steps. They yield no experience. There is absolutely no point to fighting them. I'm just going to run away, rest, and they'll be gone by the time I come back. So this orange statue must summon shit. Is that what's going on here? Can I even see you to right-click on you without stepping in your field? Of course not. So that's fine. I'm not going to lose my head i will tell you guys like just on principle unless they're guarding something that i really really want um i just don't mess with statues i've had bad experiences with statues like roxanne or whatever and so i normally play melee characters so like statues are kind of a bitch because i have to get close to them and they get the chance to just do all their stuff to me so i you know don't not a huge statue fighter. Don't want to lose to a statue that I could have just walked by. It seems... Oh, okay. Now we're getting into it. Um, all right. So, in my, you know, habit of just educating when we see a new guy, re-educating myself, or sometimes for the first time if it's a new edition, this is a sphinx, okay? Okay. A Sphinx is an enemy type that, even though I'm cruising sort of here, can still be very, very difficult because they can smite anything, again, that can smite me, hellfire me, or torment me is a problem. It can also do all this other crap, confuse me, paralyze me, or slow me, which is potentially lethal. Um, if I'm in a spot surrounded by a bunch of guys and I need to like, you know, use a potion or escape or use an ability or something, and my magic resistance isn't stunning. So I'm going to step around the corner and just wait for this guy 
Now, I did resist what he was doing. Um, so that's really great. And now I'm just going to step up onto him and get him. Sphinxes alone like that are much easier than when you're in a situation where, like, let's say above me, I had a whole bunch of guys that were blocking me, and then the Sphinx came into view and just started smiting me from far because it doesn't require a line of fire, and I can't get to them fast enough, and smiting goes through my armor. Um, it's just a sad day. Uh, there was a fan of Gales there, but I already have one in my stash, I think, and I have one on me, and there's no reason to have another. Um, let me show you this guy. So, um, he's a little demon man, but he can summon, uh, which makes him annoying. Anybody that can summon is annoying. I don't care how easy the summon things are. If they block you, oh, crap. Okay, let's stop immediately. Okay, chaos spawn. Um, okay, good. This doesn't, I swear to God, there must be an enemy that looks similar to this in hell. Um, that like flashes the whole screen and um, can mutate you. Ooh, no, here's where, it, okay, so it corrupts everything it touches, which sucks, but it also says it can cause unpredictable effects if any damage is dealt, all right? So I think I should be able to mitigate all the damage that that douchebag can deal, but, um, and, and thereby not take a, it's the shining eye, that's the one, that's the nightmare, yeah. Um, so he's like a little, version of that. What is this guy? It's a big fat guy. Green Death. I thought this was like a very hungry ghost, but he's he's Green Death. What is he on about? He just poisons you. Okay, that's fine. You can poison me. Green Death. Okay. Hey! And what did we find here? We found a doorway to Zot's realm. Okay. So... The depths, unlike the previous part of the dungeon, which is 15 levels, are only 5 levels. And they are guarded by... Um, I'm sorry, they are guarding the entrance to Zot's lair, okay? Um, and they, Zot's lair, like many times you'll see in the game, is surrounded by a whole bunch of hard enemies to even get inside. And I can't go inside right now because I only have 2 runes anyway. But um, it's good to always find it. You know... I'm going to just wait, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait, and I'm just going to go heroic and kill all these dragons and guys. That was just a tab festival. Um, we do have this black dragon scales. We don't need it because our resist negative energy is fine. Um, here is the gate to the realm of Zot. Okay, now you guys are all pros, or at least have played the game before. Um, so this is more for the people on YouTube who have never played it. This is where you need to go to beat the game, the realm of Zot. Um, oh, oh, okay, so the Black Dragon armor doesn't even give you resist negative energy, it just gives you stealth? No, okay, that's, yeah, alright. Um, that's not very good then. Although, I did see that they overhauled vampires, um, oh, that's right, the pearl is the resist negative energy. Um, and so I might want to try a vampire, it seems like they're easier, they, they streamlined them, made them easier to manage, you can just, um, change forms, uh, at will now. Um, don't have to manage blood and stuff like that. Anyway, um, that would be, a, like, if I was going to go stealthy, maybe I would go vampire or something like that. I've just never had too much luck going stealth. It's been more for fun. Um, but I found that the thing with stealth is, like, it works really well. You get some hilarious backstabs. But then if they see you one time and hit you, you're just dead. Um, <laughs> and so uh, there's that. Anyway, um... The Realm of Zot is where you got to go to beat the game. But before you can get into the Realm of Zot, you have to have three runes. Which three runes are up to you, but you need at least three runes to go into the Realm of Zot. Try to go through the, the levels of the Realm of Zot. Collect the orb at the bottom of the Realm of Zot. Um, and then your objective is to go all the way back up out of the dungeon and leave with the orb. And you win the game. So... That's how you win, and that's where you do that. But we're not going to be going in there just yet. Now, there is a chance, um, after I get some runes, that I might go in there. I like to just clear... Ooh, a ziggurat. All right, well... Um, this is something to consider. All right, let's talk about this. 
Uh, let me finish my thought on Zot. So I would go into Zot just to clear some of the earlier levels to get some experience and see if there was any gear there if I needed to. Um, you know, and just prepare myself for the run into the final floor of Zot's Lair where things get really, really hard. Um, but no need to do that just yet. Actually, I might do that just to try to get a better cloak. The thing is, like on the early floors of Zot, there's all these uh, draconian dudes who wear cloaks and they're always like... Well, not always, but many times magical and branded. And I can get a cool cloak there because I've not gotten a cool cloak yet. Anyway, here's a ziggurat, okay? Um, and so ziggurats are dungeons that you can enter. Um, and you get to keep going as deep as you can through them, earning more and more treasure um, as you go. And so you have this option to like get greedy as hell and clear the first floor of the ziggurat and then try to go deeper and keep going deeper and getting treasure and going deeper, okay? Um, you have to have two runes of Zat to go into a ziggurat, which I have. Um, oh, that's a good question. Fading, I'm not sure about that. If anybody else knows, did it used to be that if you would go into Zot, then that would like trigger endgame and all of the branches that would seal up, basically? Um, I don't know if it still does that, but I I don't hmm, I don't think it does. They might have changed that, but I'm gonna have to research that. I don't want to ruin my opportunity to explore. Um, yeah, I don't want to explore then until I have to. Um, but I don't think it is because I feel like last time I played this, I cleared all the way like the first floor fours of it or something like that. Is that, is Zot's layer still four or five levels? Um, anyway, um, so I'm going to go into this ziggurat just for science, um, and for demonstrating this to new players, but um, it's not always a guarantee that you're going to survive, and I could get aced. I feel pretty decent, but I'm not going to go deep into this place, because my gear is pretty reasonable. But ziggurats are a great place if you find them to, like, get experience and get ridiculous loot. Uh, it's just they're quite risky, and you can die real fast. So let's go in and show you what happens. Alright, so this is the first floor of the ziggurat, and as I said, they're easy as you get here, like, as you go, in the sense of the first floor isn't that bad, right? I've got a um, Moth of Wrath, which wanted to make this Cyclops go berserk, but I killed him before he could do that. Now, um, let me zoom in so you can see this better. You can either take the portal and get the hell out of the ziggurat, and ziggurats are always like this. They're very small. So um, I think they might be harder for a caster because things can get on you faster i could be wrong about that i don't know saint are they harder um fading are they harder for you as a caster or is it not a big deal the uh close quarters of the ziggurat for me as melee um oh i see what you mean aoe you can hit everybody well i guess what i have an axe so i kind of have a little aoe um but anyway um you can go out as long as you clear the enemies um or can get to the portal out or you can just go down the steps and go deeper. Now the treasure is over here on these tiles. Um, right. Um, I got a potion of might by stepping on that. with and, it, and my wand of digging. Wow. Got seven charges. That's huge. That's awesome. Um, scroll of amnesia, which isn't awesome. And then a hand crossbow. So I'm going to drop the scroll of amnesia immediately. I don't want that ever. Um, and let's see. What else we got? What else we got? Anything? Okay. I'm going deeper. Uh, I'm going to eat this flesh before I go down. I'm going to go heroic just to do some science. Yeah, I get to keep the heroic. Okay. So I'm going to go down the steps and look at this jerk. I'm on the second floor here and I got this guy. Um, Res Chiu. Um, he's a lord of pandemonium. And what can he do to me? He can summon demons. He can orb of destruction, which isn't that scary because I can block it or reflect it. And Malign Gateway. I am not familiar with that. What the hell is Malign Gateway? T 
Terra's a gash in reality, never good, creating a self-sustained but temporary portal to an unknown, tainted other world. It requires open space. To oh, and then like shit's gonna come out of this portal. Um, yeah, tentacles come out. Okay, yeah. Been there. Um, <laughs> I mean, um, anyway. Uh, but then he just hits me for 25 and doesn't have anything else. Um, except his slender body and sparrow-like wings and a great mass of hair. So he's extremely attractive. We know that much. Um, I'm going to go finesse and just... Here's his tentacle portal. I'm going to go close to him and just start chopping at him. Um, and also chopping at the tentacle. And we win. Okay, so that really wasn't horrifying. Get a blink scroll, which is awesome. Um, now, I will tell you that, like... In this game, uh, if you're not already aware of this, if there's multiple items on a tile, then these little lines appear in the lower left corner, and certain uh, pictures will always take precedence and show. Like, So the steps and the portal are always going to show, and the items that are on top of them are hidden. So when I step onto that square you might not even see on the ground anything there anymore because the auto pickup has triggered and picked these things up. So what it picked up was a potion of haste that was lying there, okay? Uh, and that's great. And then let's see what this other square has. It has a rune spear, here's some plate armor, and here's a wand of flame. Okay. Um, let's go down um, while we still have finesse, all right? And we've got... Uh, Let's look at everything here. A thorn hunter, which can volley of thorns. All right, and then wall of brambles. That makes it hard to chop through, blocks things. Um, okay, sure. I'm gonna go heroic and I'm just going to, oh, there's his wall of brambles, cool. Wall of brambles is a two, three regenerating wall. Is that right? Um, Okay. They're all gone. Anything good here? A twisted Fustibolus, which is like a uh, awesome pimp sling that you can use. Um, yeah, dude, Wall of Brambles used to be legit. When I first started playing Magic, I... Like, I thought walls were unbelievable. I was like, walls everywhere. Living wall... Wall of Brambles, Wall of Swords. I mean, couldn't get enough of that stuff. Wall of Bone. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. I mean, Wall of, so uh, wall of Swords is just uh, very, very strong. Okay. At least it used to be. I mean, I'm sure it's been outclassed at this point in the game, but, um... Oh, yeah. Yeah, Will of the Wisp is my favorite card. I actually have several of them as decoration just up because I love the... I love the fact that you can get a 0-1 flyer with regeneration for just one mana. Awesome. Okay. They reprinted that as an uncommon at one point. Um... All right, anyway, so this would be good if I'm going slings, but I'm not. Here's a phantom mirror, which I think is something I can evoke. Um, but is it... I'm going to pick it up, but I, I want to make sure it's not like some evil thing that I'm not supposed to use. So let me right-click on it. A hand mirror, which can re create a reflection of a nearby creature shattering in the process. Question is, can I use it on myself? Because if I can make a copy of me, that would be awesome. But if it only uses, if it's only good for one time, and it takes up an inventory slot, I'm kind of nonplussed about it. Anyway, um, all right, we're good. Um, I'm okay for right now. I'm gonna go down again. What do we got here? Um, all right, so this guy is annoying. Uh. Wretched Star, okay? So what he can do is Corrupting Pulse. Um, and it gives you these, like, temporary mutations, okay? So it's very annoying in the Abyss because you don't have time to, like, get away from them necessarily. 
But here, I should be able to just rest until they wear off. This guy, what does he do? Illness makes you sick. All right, so he can malmutate. Ah, okay, so he has to die right away. All right, so this is the guy that mutated me earlier with the deterioration. Um, abomination sucks. This guy's got to go. Um, so I'm just going to roll over and um, swing through until I can kill all these guys immediately. Did I get... Yeah, I got rocked. I got... Uh, I tend to lose my temper in combat, which actually sucks. Um, the problem is that uh, I'm going to go berserk now, which is okay, except I don't really want that. Um, so I'm... Do I have any potions... I'm going to probably have to drink some potions of mutations to cure the mutations. Is the way that it works now that the potions of mutations will cure your mutations but then give you mutations? So it's like you don't know if it's going to be better or worse than your situation. Is that how this is happening at this point? Like they remove the potion of cure mutation. Is that right? Let's check it out. Yeah, so it used to be in this game that there was an item that was called Potion of Cure Mutation, which was one of the best potions to get, and you would just keep them for the uh, things like this when you get negative mutations. Um, but I think they took that out because they felt like that was too good um, because characters can kind of get this inertia in this game where they need something like mutations to present threats to late-game characters. Um, so... Um, what does this do? Uh, oh no, I, I need to see potion. Uh, losing mutations, okay. A potion of mutation removes two to four mutation, then gives one to three, and then one good on top. So, um, I only have two, so my mutations will go away, but then I'm going to get one, at least one other mutation, and a, and then a good one. So that's still an improvement from my current position. Um, but then also, um, if I go Zin, right, I'm going to probably do it with one. But I might just use this to, as my opportunity to start switching to Zin so that I can just deal with these stupid mutations. Um, Zin handles these things. Yeah, um, but if you're at full piety with Zin and you drink a potion of cure or of mutation, rather, um, you get rid of all your mutations and you take no hit to your piety. That's true. Yeah, you're right about that. Um, so I might drink them all but one, you know, save them. Uh... I'm going to see what Okuwaru says about switching. Um, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. All right, so they say here... That if you can survive Vaults 5, in general, you can survive Okawaru's Wrath. So, I'm, I'm about at that point where I could really consider that. Alright, anyway, I'm going to uh, keep going deeper into this ziggurat here. Um, I'm going to see if my... Uh... It doesn't say on his page anymore that he's cool with you swapping. The only thing is when you abandon him... Um, you get to keep all the gear that he gave you. But anyway, um, no, no, no. Uh, what I meant to do was, so I still have these temporary transient mutations, but they're not really that big of a deal, but I am going to just wait, 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 wait. I'm going to 
just wait and eat until my intelligence returns. No, that's not going to return. Um, but these transient mutations should wear off at some... Well, whatever, they're not. I'm just going to go heroic then and go down. Um, okay, I'm going to back up and just pull these guys with me. All right, so here is a Entropy Weaver, which has to die right now. So, um... No, I'm just going to go finesse and get in here with the Entropy Weaver and chop him to hell before he corrodes me. And then everything else can just die. However, unfortunately, I have gone berserk. Um, now, this is actually not horrible because I'm super strong. Um, I bounced that thing back. Uh-oh. Look at that big ball. Uh-oh. He's got a big ball on me. I'm just going to push S, and I bounced it back and killed him. Ha, 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 ha. That's what you get, you asshole. All right. Um, scroll of brand weapon is really cool. Woo, just regular crystal plate mail. You know, I might actually keep this. Well, I'm definitely going to keep it, but um, just kind of keep it around, and if I get a bunch of enchant armor, maybe it will outpace the... Uh, Artifact plus two that I have. Ooh, artifact ring. This is pretty cool. It lets you blink, or does it just blink you whenever you want? I mean, when you when you don't know. Um, let me see. Uh, it lets you blink. It gives you plus eight dex and. It provides resist corrosion. All right, that's kind of cool. Um, that's a nice utility piece. I think I can already blink, though. Is that right? Maybe that's something else that I had that blinked me. Can't recall. Can't recall. Okay, cool. Thank you for that clarification. Appreciate that. My inventory is filling up, and so um, what I need to do is start making some choices on what the hell I keep because all right so I'm going to drop this wand of flame I will never use that I'm going to um, drop these fire dragon scales there's other fire dragon scales outside of here so I don't need these anything you drop in a ziggurat by the way is going to be gone forever because I believe it closes up when you leave and you can never return um but don't let that trick you into trying to go one more floor. It's so easy to get a floor in here that's just a bad beat for your character, and it's over. I'm probably actually going to leave pretty soon here. I don't want to... I'm the kind of player in this game that doesn't like to roll the dice. I'm not in a position where I need to roll the dice with this character. Um, I'm very, very strong, and just uh, natural, organic progress through the branches of the dungeon given my current position will be sufficient to get me through if i were desperate if i didn't have something if i was looking for something really badly like back in the day you would go in here to look for for example cure mutation potions if you didn't have enough um it would be worth it but i don't need to risk anything here i will go down um let me see my situation okay my situation is all right i'm gonna go down again i'll go heroic just to start out and it's a bunch of dragons. Okay, well, a bunch of dragons is actually okay. I'm just gonna chop these guys up. Here, they're all dead. More gold dragon scales, yay! Uh, okay. All right. Oh, scroll of acquirement, beautiful. Um, handbook of poisoning. Polished War Axe. Sweet. Artifact War Axe. Okay. Um, another scroll of Brand Weapon and another Lightning Rod and a Teleport Scroll. We'll pick that up. All right. So we're doing really, really well in here um, and getting some nice stuff. I will identify this War Axe. It sucks. The Cursed War Axe of Responsibility. Nobody wants responsibility. Get the hell out of here. All right. Um... Okay, I guess it's time to use our acquirement. Now, what the hell do I want right now? Um, 
my jewelry, with the exception of my necklace, is artifact. Um, what do you guys think? What would you go for in this spot? Okay. Um, I don't know if you can quite clearly see everything that I have equipped, but I have um, artifact armor, crystal plate armor. I have two artifact rings. I have an artifact hat, artifact boots. I think I'm going to go armor, to be honest. I, I don't... My weapon is insane. I have a plus 11 war axe um, of chopping with resist poison, resist fire, and stealth. I, I, but there are armor slots that I actually need to improve. Um, I have plenty of good evocables. Food situation is fine. I don't need gold. Um, I'm going to go armor. Oh, oh, I got an artifact large shield. Hello. That is really good. That's probably the best outcome I could have gotten there. Um, you did call it. What kind of, I, I thought like, I was like, is he ahead? Uh, uh, like on the, on the stream? Is he somehow ahead of me? Um, like, but no, no, you called it. Yeah, that is awesome. Let's see what this is. Ah, what a waste. What a waste. All right, well, anyway. We tried, damn it. It was supposed to be good. It looks good. The, the, the picture is amazing. How can the shield of the blacksmith be minus two? It must be the worst blacksmith in the world. All right, anyway. um, I got to move on from that. I got to lick my wounds after that and just kind of limp on. Um... You know what I'm going to do here? I am going to go deeper. I'm, I'm doing decent knock on wood. Um, it was, uh, I'm going to go in. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to step in to see what I'm dealing with. Okay, a bunch of elves. Artifact ring right off the bat. These elves are going to just die horribly. Um, well, that's funny. Um, let's kill them. This is going to take a while to load all of their stupid... I am going to go finesse just so I can chop them all okay so this the summoning is annoying so i gotta step down and kill the summoner okay he's dead and then um let's kill these guys here we go here we go everybody's dead everybody's dead oh no this guy's still around this guy's blinking around okay get out of here all right they're all dead did i reflect it back let's check probably crystal spear is one of the spells that can be blocked um and reflected so hilarious uh, let's look. So, uh, I reflected, like, so many of their arrows. Um. Yeah. I don't know what it was that I reflected, but... They didn't like it. Scroll of fog, glowing flail, glowing ring mail. Okay. Um, let's see what this... I don't have any more identifies. Um, so I'm going to have to just uh, figure out which ring I will take off. I'll just take off this for now. The ring of the final chapter. And that's the end of that chapter. All right, we don't need that. That ring sucks. I mean, it's okay early, but for me, no thank you. Okay, good enough. My plan is, um, I'm going to go heroic. At some point, I'm going to start doing finesse before I even go down the steps. I have so much piety with Okawaru that I'm not too concerned about about uh, losing that. But for now, I'm... Uh, ooh, now it's getting bigger. Okay. Um... I see. It just gets bigger and bigger. Oh, something is corroding me here. Is it uh, this dude? The demonic crawler? No. Who's corroding me? No, oh, the entropy weaver. Dear. Okay. Um, I gotta go. Oh, I don't have enough magic to do that. Ha ha ha. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, you can't target yourself with the Phantom Mirror? That's a shame. All right. Um, I'd kind of like it if it made me go berserk. That'd be hilarious. Um, anyway. Got him. Don't, don't do it. Don't, don't cast that at me. You're going to regret it. I swear. Yeah, I got resist corrosion on. It's just, it can still hit you, which is why it only took me to minus four at least. Yeah, I'm not as concerned about the Entropy Weavers because I have Resist Corrosion, but I'm still kind of, like, gun-shy because they took me out. Look at this Shilali. Beautiful. Uh, here's a Potion of Mutation. Might as well drink it right here. All right, so what is my situation? Okay, I'm going to drink it here, and you might say, what the hell are you doing drinking it inside the Ziggurat? Well, if it goes badly, I'm just going to leave the Ziggurat. Um... Yes. Okay. Um. Oh. Ah. Potions are less effective at restoring my health. Um. Sucks a ball bag. But, uh, the fact that I have this, like, encumbrance thing is pretty decent. Although I think my strength is so high and my armor skill is so high that that's not even really a thing. But, either way, it's better than what I had, which was deterioration and going berserk. I can't control that. So I'll keep that for now. Alright, we're gonna go heroic and just see what we've got. Alright, a bunch of electrical people. This kind of sucks. I have my resist elect on, right? Okay. Um, Alright. So, I am going to use my mirror, and I'm going to make a copy of this electric golem, um, and start killing people. Or trying to. Electric golems can jack you up, and so I need to kill these guys as quickly as humanly possible. It's getting spicy in here. It's getting spicy. Um... What is this guy up to? Translocational Energy Titan. Get out of here. Ah, oh, man. These guys are just going to blink around and be annoying. What jerks? Just shooting lightning at me. Bane of my existence here. Okay. But I will tell you that that fight was made easier by the fact that I drank the mutation potion. And what I mean by that is if I would have gone berserk there and then lost berserk and been slow trying to chase those electric golems around, it would have been a really bad scene. I probably would have uh, resorted to using um, wands or something. Mm, another potion of mutation. Don't mind if I do. Blank scroll is amazing. Um, I'm going to pick up that crystal ball. We got a, what, just a regular ring, a book that we can read, and another scroll of Holy Wrath. Um, okay. Oh, and I got a potion of experience that I didn't even see. I'm going to drink the crap out of that. Feel more experienced, and let's see. Let's just raise up shields again. No, let's just do what we're doing. That's cool. And I got to 26. So I'm almost uh, max experience level, I believe, unless they, that's been altered. Um, what's my mutation situation? Still potions suck for me. What is this ring? It's just a ring of evasion, huh? Well, now we know. Um, oh, no, I don't need this ball of energy. It just restores... I'm getting to the point where it's like, do I really want to go deeper here? That was a very tough floor. Lightning is always a bummer when people can do it at range. I'm going to go heroic. I'm going to step down. And this might be the time. Oh, okay. What did I say? Statue, huh? Um, I have to walk in. 
and see what the hell this is all about. So what is this statue on about? Orange crystal statue. Yeah, I can blink past it. Uh, it's going to summon crap and drain me. It can brain feed. Lots of problems here. And then the subsidian statue is also quote-unquote easy. I wonder if I want to just blink here and then kill them both. I mean, I ha I'm going to... Even if I... Yeah. I'm going to have to blink anyway to get out if things go south. So I will actually use one. Don't, don't waste it. Just walk towards them. I think I should just walk in. Well, I'll drink a potion of haste and just go there faster. Oh, you think I need two scrolls to escape? I see what you're saying. Uh-oh. It's getting dirty. It's getting dirty. Very dirty. It's all this shit. All right. Too dirty for me. Okay, so I'm going to blink here. And then... Um, blank here and leave. Yes. Okay. So these guys came with me, which I didn't think was a thing, but they really liked me. So they wanted to join me. All right. So that was a ziggurat, everybody. That's your first ziggurat. Um, no, but if you're new, it is. And that's why ziggurats are dangerous as hell. I was doing okay, and then things start escalating in difficulty, and I had to use the two blink scrolls that I found in there to escape, but that's okay, because it more than makes up for... I'm sorry, the experience I got more than makes up for that. Um, I'm going to drop this. And I did get some good items as well. As a well, I mean, I have so many scrolls of teleportation. Drop this. Okay. Okay. I even got a scroll of requirement. Now, it didn't shake out well, but that's fine. I'm very hungry, so I'm just going to eat. I'm going to look at my options. All right. So, I think the call is crypt uh, at this point. But I think before then... Um, I'm going to switch gods. And I'm going to switch gods to Zin. I like Zin a good bit. Shining One is my other choice. It's either Shining One or Zin. Okay, now Shining One is cool because um, he is awesome against undead. And he gives you an aura that reveals invisible people. Um... And let's see what he will uh, let you summon like awesome divine warriors uh, as well as divine shield, which is quite good. It stacks with your shield. So you can get to this point with divine shield from the shining one where you are just a blocking machine. Um, but beyond that, and you do get MP and MP sometimes, HP and MP sometimes when you kill demons. Um, but I still like Zin better simply for the fact that Zin helps you with mutations, which is something I'm scared of. So um, now, I think it's a good point to iterate that, like, if I were only going for a three rune run. I wouldn't necessarily switch gods. I would just keep Okawaru. So if this was my first time playing the game, I wouldn't even mess around with switching gods because you'll see when you switch gods, bad things happen. The god gets pissed and starts sending really hard enemies um, at you for a while to kind of like demonstrate his wrath. And then after a while, his wrath will go away. But you have to be ready for it. And it's not really worth dealing with um, unless you're going deep. And I'm going to try to go deep. And I want to go switch gods at a point where I can gather experience and get my piety up. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to push shift G and I'm going to go to, um, nope, not the shoals. I'm going to push shift G and I'm going to type in the temple. And I'm just going to go to the temple. Now Zin might not be here, but um, let's just do it anyway. 
Let's hit up the ecumenical temple. Hey, look, there's a hungry ghost. Get the heck out of here. All right, let's return to the temple. And here we are. And here's the shiny one right off the bat. Um, let's explore a bit and see if we can find Zin. Go zag. beep a deep -a -deep. Here we go. Now that's Evelyn. Um, or Elvilon. Vehemet. Here is my man, Zin. All right. I kneel at the altar. Okay. Yes, I wish to join this religion. Yes. I have lost my religion. Okawaru does not appreciate desertion. Zin welcomes you. Okay. Now, um, let's talk about this. You can now recite Zin's axioms of law, and you can now call upon Zin for vitalization. All right. So what do those do? You always just push A to see what the hell they do. All right. Um, so I'm going to push question mark. Reciting. Preaches to nearby monsters about Zin's laws for a short duration. After finishing a recitation that cannot be repeated for a short time. So these have different effects, okay? Depending on the target. The effectiveness of it is increased by your invocations. I'm going to start leveling up invocations massively now. You can get to a point with the reciting where you start turning undead enemies into like pillars of salt. And you kill them, and you get the experience, and they're just instantly dead. It is hilarious, all right? Now, donate gold. Um, half your gold to Zin, which will increase your piety over time. The overall increase is determined by the size of your donation. I'm going to do that. Um, vitalization provides protection from poison, confusion, petrification, rotting, and sickness, which is awesome. Increases and sustains your strength, intelligence, so it like protects your stats from draining... Um, and it also protects you against a whole bunch of other crap that can mess me up. So that's all of these things that Zen gives are really, really good so far. And I don't even have this high level stuff. I'm just like level two, um, piety. So let's go about giving, don't, uh, I'm going to donate half my money to Zen. And it doesn't instantly give you piety when you do that. It does it over time, but we'll get there. And now, um, we are into Zen. So what we need to do is bring up our skills and just make sure we are training invocations, okay? I'm actually going to turn off fighting. Um, shields, I can safely turn off for the moment because I got to 25, which is what I wanted to get to. I'll keep on axes and armor, but I'm going to go invocations. I'm going to go double time on invocations because look, my chance of failure is very, very low, but the power level is what I want to increase, all right? Um, so, I can now call upon Zin to imprison the lawless, all right? So it's like, uh, I'll show you what this does. You can temporarily imprison a monster in walls of silver. Um, so, sometimes, if you get an enemy on you that isn't, you don't want to see and you need to run away, you can pop that down. It doesn't always work, but if it does, it'll let you run away. So, another cool thing which Zin does. Um, now, I need to be very careful about my choices right now for where I go. Why is that? That is because Okuwaru is about to get pissed at me. And so he's about to send really hard stuff down on me. So I want to make sure wherever I go, um, I'm not worried about harder stuff piling on. And I think the crypt is a pretty reasonable place for me to do that. The reason is, the crypt isn't as hard as the tomb by any stretch. Um, okay. And I can get some experience. I can get some piety with Zen. As you'll see, I'm already like four up on piety with Zen. Um, now, probably that's because I gave him a uh, thousand gold. But also, I'm killing a bunch of undead things, which he likes, because he's a good god. Um, and... Now I can, um, my abilities are increasing. I'm almost to the point where I can create a sanctuary, which I have to do all the time. It's like a great oh shit button if you need it. Um, and let's just fight, 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 fight. Just holding down tab and obliterating the enemies here, okay? Gaining piety with Zin and waiting for Okawaru to express his displeasure. But I think this is a good stopping point for the night. So what we're going to do um, is just kind of say, what we what did we do this evening? We did a ziggurat. 
we did a bunch of the ziggurat and we got to the point where we're so satisfied with our position that we have switched gods and we are now going into the crypt and we are thinking about other end game possibilities we also cleared the depths all the way up to zot's lair and we are almost max level so continuing our amazing progress with Bofine, the Hoplite, Minotaur, of Zin, looking to keep this baby going tomorrow night. So everybody, thanks so much for stopping in to watch. Please, if you haven't already, check out the videos on YouTube of the runs, uh, the tips and tricks, and subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, good night, everybody. I will see you all tomorrow at 11 Eastern for some more Dungeon Crawl.